welcome back to this epic comparison in an interesting corner of the aviation industry, the middle of the market. Before we start, let's understand what the middle of the market really is through some background context. In 2011, following the launch of Boeing 737 MAX, several operators started to ask for a true 757 replacement. It was previously thought that Boeing would design a slightly larger single aisle to completely replace 737 and 757 while also competing with the A321neo, which at the time was the closest aircraft in performance to the 757. Boeing started studies of a new mid-size jet, to be the perfect 757 and 767 replacement for airlines while also tapping into new markets. Boeing deemed this segment of the market with a new term, the middle of the market, a market they felt previously wasn't served by any aircraft type. As an example, the standard A321neo or 737 MAX 9 offered at the time fell short in size and range. But as wide-body aircraft have evolved over the years to become more capable with longer ranges and higher seating capacity, they offered too many seats with too much range. That was where this brand new airliner with new fuel-efficient technologies prioritizing operating costs could come in. An aircraft with ranges and capacity that perfectly slots between today's narrow body and wide bodies. But Airbus claimed the world didn't need a brand new middle-of-the-market airplane as it would introduce cost and complexity into many airlines' fleet rather than streamline them. Instead, they viewed this market best served by a combination of high-performing single-out aircraft and lower and wide bodies. Airbus officially marketed their upgraded A321 the A321 long range in 2014. With a range of 4,000 nautical miles while carrying 206 passengers, this variant already had performances aging close to 757s while burning less fuel. However, Boeing dismissed this as a true middle-of-the-market aircraft, stating that the A321 platform didn't have the performances or size to fit in this market and truly replace 757s. In 2019, Airbus responded to market requests for more range by upgrading it further. And that was when the A321 XLR was born. Boeing, having to deal with the crisis on its 737 MAX, simply wasn't able to dedicate R&D for launching an all-new clean sheet airplane. The launch date for their new mid-size airplane was continuously pushed back. With the launch of the A321 XLR, the lower end in this middle of the market is well addressed. Thus, Boeing announced they would prioritize the rumored larger Dash 7 variant. Hence, the future battle in this new mid size market is set. In today's comparison, we'll be comparing models from both companies that offer the best operating economics in the segment. The smaller A321XLR against the larger, more capable 797 variant. Now you may be asking, why aren't we comparing the larger A330-800neo, an aircraft that Airbus pitches to serve the upper end of this middle market and is closer in seating capacity to the larger 797? Well, there is one simple reason, which is that the A330neo simply wouldn't compete well with 797, as due to its heavier operating weight empty and airframe optimized for long-haul routes, it is expected to burn 40% more fuel both per trip and per seat than 797 which was optimized for short Shorter medium haul routes. Please note though that performance figures in this video for both are highly based on performance rumors and guarantees rather than actual real world figures. Also, as neither aircraft is flying yet, due to a lack of footage, I will be using footage of other similar aircraft which aren't one for one representations. Before we start, if you are new to the channel, a warm welcome and stay tuned for more great detailed aviation analysis and epic comparisons now coming weekly. If you like the latest in the aviation industry, head over to the Airplane Productions Instagram page, the new and future home for all future aviation news updates. A link is in the description below. Also, you may have heard of the bushfires in Australia, an unfortunate situation that simply escalated out of hand. If you would like to contribute to the recovery process, do consider donating via the links in the description below as a kind deed. 
every cent donated could make a difference and thus the support would be greatly appreciated. Right, let's kickstart this epic one. Starting with performance, what matters is how they fit in this market segment. The A321XLR has a maximum range of 4,700 nautical miles while carrying 206 passengers, while the larger rumoured 797-7 variant has seating capacity at 270 passengers without the additional range flying 4,500 nautical miles. Overall, A321XLR has more range with lower capacity similar to 757, but the 797 has higher range payload capabilities closer to smaller white bodies like the 767. Both aircraft's performance do not overlap and bring significant value to this market segment. In terms of engines, well, the 797 is likely to be powered by a new generation of engine, either from CFM or Pratt & Whitney. Both companies may choose to scale up their existing engines powering single out to get up to 50,000 pounds of thrust. XLR is powered by either the Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan PW1100G engine or the CFM Leap 1A option, with the same thrust output of 33,100 pounds of thrust. All in all, both aircraft feature the latest engine technologies, but which then is more efficient? Well, the fuel consumption figures are a rough estimate, given the 797 isn't launched at all. Hence, take this with a pinch of salt. As we can see from the newly introduced airplane production's chart of efficiency, something many of you requested for, the A321XLR claims to have similar cost per seat to its A321 Airlar counterpart when configured in a typical lower density 2 class layout for long range flying. Per passenger, it burns approximately 2.43 litres per 100 kilometres in the 154 packs configuration, while the 797 burns 2.42 litres per passenger for every 100 kilometres flown in a larger 270 packs configuration which shows that both are virtually identical. With no exact numbers, Boeing claims its 797 will burn 40% less fuel per trip than the A330neo. All in all, both are efficient, with the most efficient 797 variant only achieving a slight fuel burn advantage over the smaller A321XLR. Moving on to cabins, these aircraft differ night and day. The 797 is rumoured to be a smaller white body, while A321XLR is a single R, with a fuselage cross-section similar to 767, all featuring the newest Boeing Sky interior from 787. The 797 will feature wider 18-inch seats in a cabin optimised for 7-abreast layout. It also receives new mood lighting, larger windows, and a spacious view with a cabin wider than it is tall. As the fuselage is made of composite materials, it will have cabin pressure at 6,000 feet, important on longer flights. The A321XLR falls short on cabin pressure, while its single hour fuselage and smaller windows gives it a less spacious view. Space-wise, it can actually compete, with the same 18-inch wide seats. It also has the largest overhead bins available on any single hour aircraft flying today, and a relatively quiet cabin. Both will feature latest IFE and connectivity services. Overall though, the new 797 is anticipated to bring a more comfortable cabin with its wide body experience on this medium range flights. Moving on to advantages and disadvantages, A321XLR is a low-risk approach to this middle market segment, with its low trip and operational cost taken from the A320neo. Pilots also do not have to be retrained to fly this aircraft type, as it shares commonality with other A320neo variants. However, it is best suited as a 1 for 1757 replacement and doesn't cover the 767-sized upper market segment. Yeah. 
797 on the other hand is perfectly suited for this market, with range payload capabilities perfectly aligned with this market's requirements. Also, it has a better cabin tailored for these longer missions and features newer technologies such as a composite fuselage and advanced aerodynamics. However, despite all this, the fuel burn performance isn't significantly improved over the XLR, with little incremental value to justify the costs and risks that a new aircraft program brings with it. Furthermore, this white body also has limited cargo capabilities similar to single-R aircraft, meaning that potential cargo revenue associated with most white bodies is lost. In terms of orders, the A321 XLR has already received over 450 firm orders, though some are up conversions from the A321 NEO. Boeing 797 has received new interest from many airlines replacing 767 aircraft, as well as others looking to open up new routes to new destinations. However, as it isn't launched, no firm orders have been placed yet. It is worth noting that some carriers looking to replace 757s have already purchased the XLR, leaving the 797 to capture this larger 767 replacement market. Still, open demand for this aircraft seems positive, as demand for the aircraft should be stimulated if it proves to bring new levels of economics. So then, is there a better middle-of-the-market product? Well, the A321 XLR offers a perfect low-risk option for airlines looking to replace 757 without sacrificing performance. With its lower capacity, it will allow airlines to open up more new routes with more new markets. The 797 though will offer higher performances to airlines, perfect then for replacing 767. Airlines can then also grow those routes with its higher seating capacity without the need to place a traditional larger white body that may not deliver the economics to make such routes profitable. All in all, both the A321 XLR and larger 797 variant serve this important market well as a duo. Do you agree with this verdict? And if you don't, why so? Comment below. Thanks for tuning in to this epic comparison and do stay tuned for more on the way. In the meantime, till we meet in the next one, wishing everyone a truly clear sky ahead.